Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed moment and moment of a force. And we said moment of a force is the product of a force and the perpendicular distance from a point of support or the fulcrum. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss the principle of moment. And here, we are going to look at a case where you have a pivot at the middle then you have moments on the right hand side and some moments on the left hand side. So that's what we're going to discuss in the principle of moment. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to state the principle of moments and then write the mathematical expression of the principle of moments and then later solve some numerical questions concerning principle of moment. The principle of moment explains a scenario where you have more than one force acting on either side of the pivot. In this case, if you have a pivot here, then on the left hand side, on this side here, we have a force F1 due to W1, F2, then we have F3 here, then we have F4. In this case, each force, either W1, W2, W3, W4, has a perpendicular distance to the pivot. Like in this case, W1 has a distance D1 to the pivot. Therefore, if we can calculate moment, moment due to, we're going to begin with W1, then that moment is going to be uh, F1, in this case, times d1 the perpendicular distance to the pivot then if we want to calculate moment due to w2 it's going to be f2 times d2 that is uh, the perpendicular distance from the pivot and now if we calculate moment moment due to uh, w3 in this case w3 is on the right hand side and then we have a distance d3 then in this case it's going to be f3 times d3 then for w4 moment to do due to w4 is going to be f4 times d4 but again in this case in each of these moments that we have calculated each of these force either w1 w2 w3 and w4 when you apply them on this bar when you apply them on this bar, they are going to cause this bar to rotate in different moments or different directions. Like in this W1, if you pull it down, it's going to make this bar to rotate in anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise direction. And then F2, which is due to W2, is also going to make this bar to rotate in anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise direction. Then we have now W3, when you pull it down, it's going to make this one to rotate in clockwise direction. Also, W4 is going to cause it to rotate in a clockwise direction. So W1 and W2, they are going to make this one to rotate in a clockwise direction. It means these two moments are making this bar to rotate in anti-clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction therefore we call them anti-clockwise moments the moments or the forces that make this body or this bar to rotate in anti-clockwise uh, direction we call them anti-clockwise moments and then w3 and w4 which cause a clockwise movement of this bar we call them uh, clockwise moments so in this case the moments you do w3 and w4 are clockwise moments. This one we call them clockwise moments. And then this one is now summarized using the principle of moment, which states that for a system in equilibrium, if a system is at balance, the sum of clockwise moments is always equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. Sum means if you add the clockwise moments, clockwise moments here in this case we have F3 and d3 and then f4 times d4 
Then anticlockwise moments, we have F1 D1 plus F2 times D2. So in this case, the sum of anticlockwise moments here is F1 times D1. This is one clockwise anticlockwise moment plus sum means it's an addition plus F2 D2 or F2 times D2 will be equals to the sum of clockwise moment. Clockwise moment is due to W3 and W4, which is F3 times D3 plus F4 times D4. Now this one are clockwise moment. So these are anti-clockwise moments, and then these are clockwise moments. So according to the principle, all the principle of moments, or what we call the lever rule, the sum of anticlockwise moments must be equal to the sum of clockwise moments if a system is in equilibrium. When it's in equilibrium, we mean it's a state of balance. So we can now handle a question concerning the principle of moment. And the first question reads, a uniform meter rule reported at its center is balanced by a force of 200 newtons at a distance of 0 0.2 meter and another force F is balanced at 75 centimeter mark. Calculate the force F. So in this case, we have a 200 meter, let's call it F1, which is balanced at 0 0.2 meter from zero on this meter rule. Then it means the distance from the pivot is 50 uh, centimeter minus 20 centimeter. In this case, 50 minus 20 is 30. So it means this distance here, D1, is equal to 0 0.3 meter. Then we have F2. Let's call it F2, the one that we don't know. Then it's at a distance of 75 from zero. Then it means from the center where it is balanced or from the pivot, it is 75 minus 50. So D2 here is equals to 0 0.25 because 75 minus 50 is 25 and then if you change it to meter you get 0 0.25 meter then now if we want to find force f then we will apply the principle of moment which says sum of clockwise moment is equals to the sum of anti-clockwise moment for a system in equilibrium. So in this case, uh, clockwise moments that we have is due to this F2. If you pull this F2, it will give you a clockwise moment. Then F1 here on the left hand side, if you pull it down, it will make this one to rotate in anti-clockwise moment. So in this case, the clockwise moments that we have is F2 times D2 which should be equal to the sum of clockwise moment, which is F1 times D1. Now, do we have F2? No. So we are looking for F2 times D2. Yes, we have it as 0 0.25 meter is equals to, do we have F1? Yes, 200 Newton times D1 is 0 0.3 uh, meter. So in this case, on the left hand side, we can have F2 times 0 0.25, which will give us 0 0.25, 0 0.25 meter F2, which is equals to 200 times 0 0.200 times 0 0.3, which is going to give us 60 Newton meter. So in this case, if we need uh, if we need F2, then we are going to get it by dividing by 0 0.25 on both sides, 0 0.25 meter divided by 0 0.25 meter on both sides. Then in this case, 0 0.25 on the left hand side will cancel. Then on the right hand side, meter will cancel with meter. Then we will remain with 60 Newton divided by 0 0.25 and then this one will give us 60 Newton divided by 0 0.25 which is going to give us 
as F2. Our F2 is, is going to be 240 Newton. So in this case, we have applied the principle of moment. That is clockwise moment is equals to anti-clockwise moment to get F2. So the second question here, now we have multiple forces on this bar. Three forces are applied on a meter rule as shown. Calculate force F. So in this case, we have force F here. Then we have another force, which is 40 newtons at a distance of H from zero. Then we have 75 newtons, which is acting at zero. So if I call this one F1, this F2, which we are looking for, then we have F3 here. Then the first thing that we must do is to determine the distance from the pivot, since they are perpendicular to the pivot. And then the other thing is to determine on what direction they are pulling this body or this bar. In this case, F1, if you pull it down, it will pull this bar or this meter rule in anti-clockwise direction. So it will give it anti-clockwise moment. Then F2, if you pull it down, it will give it a clockwise moment. Then F3, if you pull it down, it will going to give this one a clockwise moment. So here we have one anti-clockwise moment and two anti-clockwise moments. That is very important to note first. Then the second thing is the distance from the pivot. F1, the distance D1 now here, D1 is going to be 50 minus zero, which is the same as 0 0.5 meter, 50 divided by 100. Then F2 to the pivot, in this case here, let's call it D2, this is the pivot here. Then we have um, F2 like that. Let me put it clear. So here we have D2. D2 in this case, it's going to be 60. The force F2 is acting at 60 minus 50, which is 10, which is 0 0.1 meter. Then we have uh, F3, then the distance is D3 from the pivot to the force F3, we call it D3, which is the same as 80 minus 50, which is the same as 0 0.3 meter. So from this now, we can write down the equation of the principle of moment, which says sum of clockwise moment is equals to the sum of anti-clockwise moment. In this case, how many clockwise moments do we have here? We have one and two. These two forces are giving it clockwise moment. And then anti-clockwise moment, we only have one. Therefore, in this case, we can write the equation in terms of a formula as F2 as our first clockwise moment times D2 plus another clockwise moment, which is F3 times D3 that is clockwise moment, is going to be equals to anti-clockwise moment, which is only one, that is F1 times D1. That is the only anti-clockwise moment we have here. So in this case, if we substitute F2 is what we are looking for, times D2, which is 0 0.1 meter, that is one of the clockwise moment, if we add it to another clockwise moment, that is F3, which is 40 Newton, times D3 is 0 0.3 meter, it should give us uh, something equal to F1, which is 75 Newton, times D1, which is 0 0.5 meter. So in this case, if we solve this one, it will be the first one will be 0 0.1 meter F2 plus 40 times 0 0.3. It's going to give us 40 times 0 0.3, 12. So here it is 12 Newton meter. Now this is clockwise moment. It's going to be equals to the sum of anticlockwise moment, which is 75 times 0 0.5, which is 37.5, 37.5 Newton meter. So in this case, if we write it down here, it will be 0 0.1 meter F2 plus 12 Newton meter 
is equals to 37.5 newton meter so as you can see we have common units here so it means these are like terms so if we take this 12 newton meter on the other side then we will remain with 0 0.1 meter f2 is equals to 37.5 newton meter minus 12 newton meter so in this case if you subtract 12 from 37.5 then it's going to give us 25.5 so in this case we will have our 0 0.1 meter f2 is equals to 25.5 newton meter and now if we need if we need f2 then it means we will divide by 0 0.1 meter on both sides 0 0.1 meter then in this case this 0 0.1 meter on the left hand side will go like that we will remain with f2 which is the same as sorry this is not 0 0.01 but 0 0.1 it is 0 0.1 meter then in this case meter will cancel with that meter then this one will go one and then it will remain 225 so here we will have 255 255 newtons as our f2 so the force that we have to exert at f2 so that it can cause a balance to the anti-clockwise moment on the left hand side is 255 newton so that will mark the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss parallel forces